If I could move forward uh, to the sort of next question we have, and this comes from uh, Kashif uh, Raza from North London. Thank you, Kashif. Jazakumullah for your question. He writes, Assalamu alaikum to all the panel. Um, his question is one on punishment within Islam. And he asks, is amputation of a thief's hand the Islamic punishment for theft, first of all? And is it right for the Quranic injunction of severing a thief's hand to be interpreted metaphorically as imprisonment? Dr. Zahid. The um, prescribed punishments in Islam uh, uh, for various crimes have a deep philosophy mm -hmm. behind them. There is reasoning behind them. And uh, it is important that those philosophies should be understood. Uh, in general, uh, Islamic punishment, these adopt the middle route between the Mosaic law, um, where it was an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, and uh, what Jesus taught of turning the other cheek. And Islam has the, uh, adopts the middle, middle route. Islam recommends that if a greater purpose can be achieved through forgiveness and through cle clemency, then certainly that is the best method and that That's is... That's often not understood and certainly here in the West particularly. You know, you, you see Islamic countries and immediately, oh, someone commits theft, they're going to chop the right hand off or, sure. you know, whatever. It's, it's not understood at all, is it? It's not I mean, it, it is very easy for the West to pick up on those ex extreme mm -hmm. uh, situations that they, that they find in the Arab world today in some respects. But if they look at the history of Islam and the life example of the Holy Prophet wasallam and of the Khulafa Rashidin, they will certainly see that clemency was always at the higher most thought. So that, that is the most important thing. But at the same time, uh, it is felt that if uh, the problems would go on increases through keeping on forgiving for the same crime, then certainly a, pu a punishment needs to be put in place mm -hmm. as a deterrent uh, and that punishment should be of the right nature for the crime that has been con committed. We should always remember the philosophy behind punishments is that it was for the safeguarding of the moral values of society uh, and, and that is important. And theft is a serious crime after all for the, for the victim who becomes deeply affected by the crime. Uh, and so the, uh, in extreme cases the cutting off of the hand has been prescribed in the whole Quran. Just to be clear on that, it's, it's not just this black and white, you know, Islam and Islamic jurisprudence. You in your own position certainly would know this as well um, and are well placed to answer this. That it, it looks at the context in which the crime was committed, the circumstances of that individual. And as you said, it is the extremity, maybe a, a sort of a repeat offender or an extremity of a crime which carries these punishments. That's right. I mean, everything has to be looked at case per case uh, and the conditions have to be looked at, the perpetrator has to be looked at and to see uh, if it is repetitive crime mm -hmm. and what has been the effect on, on the victim. Um, and also if you look at the life of uh, Hazrat Umar Razila Talanho, he would always look at the extenuating circumstances and he would actually delve deep into it and even if there was the slightest extenuating circumstances then he would carry out a much lighter penalty. So that, that is important to, to realize. The other thing that uh, the West has forgotten and it is important that they should remember is that here in England for instance uh, theft of property worth more than a shilling was seen as a felony and like uh, felon, all other types of felony the punishment for that um, uh, was uh, punished by death. So up to even 1861 okay. yeah. for theft up to the property of a shilling then the, then the thief would be, uh, would be killed. So that is putting, putting that into context. But it is important to realize that if you study the verses of the Holy Quran there is a primary meaning and a secondary meaning uh, to the verse of the Holy Quran. For instance, Avi, the hands has a physical uh, but also a metaphorical sense, meaning power or capacity of. So okay. in order to uh, limit the capacity of a person or his power, that is something that should be thought of as well. Katha has a secondary connotation as well. Cutting off means curtailing or prohibiting the use of. Katha al-lisan, cutting off the tongue, doesn't mean literally to cut it's the okay. tongue off. So this has to be also understood in that respect that cutting of the hands has got a secondary meaning uh, and it means prohibiting their free movement. So if you study the Holy Quran, there are several references 
to the word uh, Qatar, which has been used, and in every situation, it, it does not literally mean a cutting off, but it means prohibiting or curtailing, uh, and therefore, in that respect, imprisonment could also be seen as such, that you have curtailed the use of those hands in society, and therefore the punishment has to be seen in that respect as well. So this is the interpretation that we need to understand, is that uh, we have to look at the circumstances of the crime that was committed, um, and certainly if it has come to the extreme, then that is the punishment that has been prescribed but uh, there are extenuating circumstances so and they should be looked at. All considered. factors have to be considered. And Dr. Uh, Dr. Saab, I think you've answered that in a very comprehensive uh, fashion and I hope, um, gosh, if that's uh, answered the question you've raised, but if there are any questions you have subsequent to Dr. Zahid's answer, please do email in.